Thanks for clicking on to the Friday edition of Vogan's European Outlook. This is the year to take temperature anomalies across Europe. And you can see actually an interest in north south divide in the continent. Uh, somewhat below average across the north. We have seen some significant mild conditions across Scandinavia at the very start of the month and the uh, other parts of the winter that has kind of chipped away at the, the below average temperature anomaly here. But nonetheless, colder than average across the north of Europe, warmer than average across the south. And you notice here there's a bit of a north-south split in the UK as well. Average to slightly below average conditions across Scotland, warmer than average across England, Wales. Average conditions across Ireland here. This is the uh, anomaly for the last 90 days, believe it or not. And interestingly enough, we have a continuation of that trend, cold and average across Scandinavia. Even Scotland has taken in that cold and average across uh, the northern UK. And remember, this is a 90-day period, which is rather interesting, actually. But uh, England, Wales, <coughs> Ireland and Northern Ireland is firmly above average for the 90-day period. Month to date so far looks like this here. And you can see that we are firmly warmer than average here. Starting to slightly chip away at that anomaly across the very far north. Lewis looks as if it is actually in the slightly below average temperatures here. Scandinavia, it's a bit of a, a, a mixed bag. We've got cold and average versus warm and average, but look at the heart of Europe. Bit of a blowtorch so far through the first nine days of, uh, of February. So did you realize that the minus 13.8 celsius that was recorded yesterday morning at al Har was actually just 0 0.2 celsius off the winter's minimum for the uk the coldest temperature being dalwini at minus 14 set back last month and uh, it was a surprisingly cold morning across the northern uk while we were clinging on to a uh, much milder conditions across the far south of the British Isles. We had 10.6 in Guernsey, while we had minus, uh, very close to minus 14 across the far north. So nearly a 25 Celsius difference between the Channel Islands and northern Scotland during yesterday morning. And milder has swept north um, to essentially eradicate the cold. But with clear skies, light winds, Arctic are in place and snow cover, we did see the temperatures drop like a stone um during the overnight into to yesterday morning i did think minus 10 was possible i have to be honest i was slightly surprised when i looked at the morning minimums to see temperatures as low as that so yeah, i think you could argue anyway and i'm not clutching at straws here but you know the colder got so close but yet so far away at the same time the milder certainly has been winning the battle through the course of this week i have seen some transient snow through uh, parts of upland wales uh, england northern england up into southern scotland and also with the uh, with northerly winds across the far north of scotland we did see a covering of snow we did get uh, uh, about a half inch or so of snow at the uh, here at marfogan weather hq that actually stuck around for a couple of days temperatures stuck in low single figures during the daytime uh, and temperatures below freezing by nighttime held that snow cover in place incidentally this is the current temperatures as of recording at three minutes past five in the evening we've got a temperature of one celsius log less garnock but get yourself down into the south and southeast of the country and we have 11s 12s even uh, do we have a 13 no it looks like we've got 11s and 12s here all the way down to the south coast parts of east anglia it fairly mild conditions overall looking across europe and we have got a very distinct contrast between scandinavia and the rest of europe essentially here even western russia into the baltic states we've got some fairly cold air in place at the moment here temperatures this morning down to minus 37.3 in parts of finland we had a minimum of 16.4 in southeastern Spain, so a very big range in temperature across Europe, but also across uh, the, the the UK during the course of this morning. But they, then, as that milder air continued to drift northwards, with it decreased that imbalance. But a very sharp contrast, as you notice here, at the time of recording across 
Central Europe, very, very mild conditions, below average conditions across the north. So we've got the cold back in place across Scandinavia once again. But the question is, what happens from now? So let's take a comparison between the GFS and the ECMWF with regards to the 850 temperature profile here. This gives you a better uh, understanding in terms of what air mass you're actually dealing with. And it looks as if both the ECM and the GFS is kind of seen this continuation of battle between cold Arctic air to the north and mild, very mild subtropical air to the south. And uh, I have to say that it looks as if the milder essentially is going to start to win the battle here over the next week or so at least anyway you can see here that we do continue to see low pressure dominating the pattern as we go through the course of this weekend and, and into early next week and then as we play through the loop you can see more areas of low pressure right in that boundary between warm and cold the the boundary getting lifted north it gets a uh, kind of pushed southwards here the UK remains in the battleground, but as these areas of low pressure lift north, the key is to the west of the British Isles, meaning that we keep the UK on the generally the milder side of the jet stream here, and therefore it looks as if the, the mild is going to win the battle, um, as you can see here, towards the middle and the uh, portion of the month here. So I have to I have to hold my hand up and say that the mullein is now starting to show milder compared to what I originally was thinking here. This could be the first time this entire winter that I do have to start saying to myself that the forecast isn't playing out quite what I thought here. Um, the Arctic Oscillation is firmly in the tank. The NAO, according to the GFS Ensemble, is not wanting to go negative, which is rather interesting. But we've got a very deep negative Arctic Oscillation at the moment here. But it looks as if the cold is not there. And I kind of almost feel a little bit like the El Nino. And a, a kind of east-based type of El Nino situation is now starting to unfold here. Where you're, get, you're getting an, you know, an overriding El Nino influence. And that being a warming influence uh, overall here. So... um. Like I said, it, it does to me look as if it's starting to kind of sway on the milder side of things here. As I've said already, I will hold my hand up if um if I'm wrong with a forecast here. Up until now, I think things have been pretty decent in, in all honesty. You can see here by the time we reach the end of next week here, the, the ECM has a, a push of very cold air coming south here. Notice here we've got a deep area of low pressure just off Newfoundland driving some warmer up the western side of the north atlantic and in turn that drives a lobe of colder dis displaces it off greenland down the chute and into the uk here by the time we reach the uh, next weekend here but this is a week away very very long time away and it, it has to be taken with a uh, with a fairly large grain of salt i'm afraid now, I understand that the MJO isn't always a clear signal. The reason why I've been harping on about it so much in recent times is because it has been a very good tool to use. It has been doing um, the general circuit uh, through the cold phases, late in November, early December, mid-January. It also rotated through the, the warm phases, mid-December and late January. But that warm influence has been lingering a lot longer. It's been longer and stronger than anticipated. But it did, if you look back at the winter forecast, I did actually allude to the fact that uh, we cannot rule out the warm side of the mix in terms of the teleconnections are not what they used to be. We've got a much warmer world than what we did even a decade ago and uh, you know further back and that then starts to skew some of these signals some of these indicators that we've used for so long now with the AO the NAO we've got a firmly deep negative AO the NAO isn't uh, playing ball we don't have the big plunge of cold air into both North America and into Europe like we, we, like we anticipated we have got cold air back in place across Scandinavia but look at how much warmth there is across the heart of Europe. And I think there is something, you know, driving this warmer theme overall. And I think it's possibly the backdrop of the warmer planet, the warm North Atlantic, driving a stronger jet. But 
fundamentally the El Nino looks as if it may be starting to kind of take a little bit more firmer grip and that was always my fear as we go through this winter here that the the El Nino I kind of said that I, I really was quite confused by the behavior of the El Nino sea surface temperatures versus the atmosphere and whatnot but again it's not all done and dusted I don't think I think there is still plenty of caveats plenty of twists and turns with regards to the winter uh, overall you notice here that the MJO is kind of tuned kind of loop-de-loops here between phase seven and phase eight here there's a, a, a possibility that it drifts into to phases uh, one and into the null phase so it kind of collapses it loses some of its amplitude so therefore it has less influence in my opinion this is my understanding of the mjo the stronger the influence the stronger the the wave as it propagates eastwards across the equatorial region of the world the stronger that is the more influence it has on the pattern within the northern hemisphere here but there is definitely an underlying underlining driver here that is now it certainly appears in my opinion to be taking control of the overall situation here so uh, it certainly is very interesting times uh, there's no question about that we're living in different times compared to what we did uh, even just a few years ago and uh, i know that the mjo isn't the primary driver i know uh, a negative arctic oscillation north atlantic oscillation isn't necessarily the be all and the end all when it comes to cold weather across the uk europe uh, and whatnot here there is a lot more to it it's a very complex system in general check out the cfsv2 weeklies week one temperature anomalies here cold and average across the north warm and average across the south blow torch across the heart of europe if you notice here week two you can see here that it warms up slightly especially across northern uk average conditions further south but you notice here the warming to the west of the british isles in ireland here representative of a blocking area of high pressure then in the week three period between the 22nd and 29th of February we turn colder once again and then the following week it still holds on to a little bit of colder which is quite interesting so the models are kind of back and forth with regards to the overall cold situation um let's finally take a look at the uh, HPA temperatures uh, at 10 millibars and you can see the strong warming continuing to see, be shown on the models out of Siberia towards the pole it, it takes a firm uh, this uh, displacement of the polar vortex here right across the top of the pole and uh, essentially uh, does a pretty good job at wiping it off its base here and you look at the the uh, anomalies here and then we've got another surge of warming actually if you notice here at the very end of the loop so we continue to see this uh, third uh, stratospheric warming of the winter and uh, it's somewhat unusual to see that actually the the, the uh, uh, a third major stratospheric warming in one here's a rather interesting tweet here by uh, dr amy butler here pretty psyched about the possibility of a double ssw year remember that we actually did have a uh, uh, a reversal in the mean zone of winds was constituted a major southern stratospheric warming but we did see a pretty strong warming taking place earlier on in the winter so this would be the third strong warming potentially second wind reversal in one season here the last one was in 2010 though the situation was a bit different because one was in late march and barely qualified other double ssw years were 98 99 87 88 70 71 65 66 which is rather interesting actually going back to yesterday's snow event this was the scene here from the peak district captured by storm chaser liam a beautiful scene here over the hills of uh, of england interesting tweet here also by mika rantanen showing that in finland there have now been four consecutive months with a nationwide temperature anomaly of a uh, less than minus two celsius the last such streak of cold months occurred in the winter of 0910 so there you go interesting things um and stats coming out in different areas of a uh, of uh, the continent here so keep it right here on marfogenweather.com on youtube I do greatly appreciate your support. Drop a comment in the in the section below. And uh, if you haven't already done so, hit that subscribe button. Plenty more interesting, interesting things to come. I will have a video hopefully tomorrow. And then the Global Weather Report will be released on Sunday. So stay tuned for that as well. Thanks for watching. Have a good Friday evening. Bye for now.